the High Tech Nomad here, and I'm going to show you how to be an application programmer in three minutes. Now, normally when you think about a programmer, you think about somebody that writes lines of codes to create applications that do amazing things. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. However, we're not going to use a complicated programming language. We're gonna use a simple free website called IFTTT. And all IFTTT stands for is if this happens, then do that. Very, very simple. It's a free website. Basically, you load an app on your phone, you go to the website, you put in your email address, you verify that, and boom, we're ready to go. I'm going to actually show you an example first, and then we'll go back and look at it in detail. So normally after you've set everything up, you would see a, a blank screen. These blue blocks I have are there because I've actually created things already, but you would have a blank screen and you would have this button that says new applet or new, I, I just prefer to say app, but new applet. So you click on that and this is the programming interface. It says, if this happens, then do that. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the this or the trigger. What's going to happen? What has to happen for this to actually do something? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hold on for one second. I have to prepare something. All right, so it has all of these different services. We're going to take a look at those in a minute. But for right now, we're just going to type in device. And we have Android device. And it says, what has to happen on your Android device? And you see we have connects anything from receive a notification to connect to a Bluetooth device, connect to a Wi-Fi, there's all kinds of neat things we can do. I'm gonna go with disconnects from a Bluetooth device. So now what we've basically said is when a Bluetooth device disconnects from our phone, we want it to do the following. So that was what we call it a trigger. And now we have to look at the action. What action do we want it to take? So we're gonna click on the that and again, we have a whole bunch of different actions, but we're gonna come back here again to device and we're gonna make it very simple. We're gonna say play music. We're gonna click on create. We're gonna click on finish and that's it, okay? When a Bluetooth device disconnects from the phone, it will then play music. So now let's actually go ahead and see that happen. So here we are in, this is actually my phone and we will turn off, get every, we'll clear everything out. Okay, so there's no, no programs running in the background or anything like that. I do have the IFTTT application loaded on the phone, but you don't have to run it. You just have to load it on your phone and it knows what to do. So let's go to Bluetooth and you will see that in Bluetooth, I do have one device connected and that is my Gear S3 watch. And so now what we're gonna do is turn off that device. So I'm gonna go over to my phone. I'm sorry, gonna go over to my watch. I have my watch on my wrist and I'm pushing the button and I'm clicking on power off. And after a few seconds, you'll see it disappear from there. Yo, my okay. Jet, my jet. And there it goes, it starts playing music. Let's go ahead and start. There we go. Okay. That simple. It was that simple. Okay. So now let's go back and look at this in detail. Let's actually turn it off for one second. So, you know, what good was this little program? If something disconnects, it plays some music. Well, it actually saved me $300. How is that, you ask? Well, let me tell you, I say. I had this particular application, I had this applet running, and I was at the airport, and you know, they make you take everything out of your pockets and everything like that, blah, blah, blah. And I had put my phone in one of the containers, and then I put another container on top of that, and I put some other stuff. And when I got to the other side, I'm trying to get myself together, and what I had done is left my phone in between the two, uh, two of those little bins, those two little pieces. And when I walked away, obviously when I got too far away from my phone, the my watch disconnected from my phone and it started playing loud music. And that I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's my phone. And I went back and I got my phone. So if I hadn't had that, I would have lost my phone. So there's all kinds of incredible things that you can do. Now, there are two things that, that things do. We have triggers, meaning this is what happens. And we have actions which is, this is what I want you to do. So all of these companies 
have created interfaces for their product or service. And they don't have a bunch of things every time. Sometimes they only have one or two, sometimes they have three or four, but they'll have all of these different things that can happen and all of these different things that you can cause to have happen. So let's kind of go back up here. So let's just take a look, for example, at a GE dishwasher. So we can go in and take a look. And here are usually down the bottom, they will give you the triggers and the action. So the triggers are end of a dishwashing cycle. And the action is basically we can't take any action. So, but we can, oh, here we go. Uh, 10 pods remaining, uh, rinse, add, uh, rinse aid levels low, filter needs cleaning, leak detected. So we can say, when you detect the leak in the dishwasher, then send me an email. Uh, so here, and here we have another, and they have some sample ones here. Receive uh, a text message if your filter needs cleaning or post a tweet saying that your, your dishes are done or what have you. So we can use any of these in any combination. Let's take a look at a couple others here. And you can see there's a ton of them. I obviously can't go through uh, all of these. Let's go back one page. Come on, let's go back a page. So I'm gonna scroll through these slowly, but you can see there's a ton of things. So, and you can probably guess what a lot of them are. Things like your iRobot. So your Roomba, you can say, you know, when it finishes vacuuming, tell me this, or if it gets jammed, do that. Blogging, you can say when a post goes up that has these words in it, or I want you to post this to my WordPress site, or this particular thing happens on Pinterest or Pocket, or somebody joins my MailChimp list, or somebody becomes a new client on Salesforce, or it's my anniversary on this particular date and time, or such and such happens on my Google Calendar, or, and again, so you get the idea. So we, we have all of these triggers and all of these different actions, and you can use these, uh, mix and match these to your liking. So I'm gonna give you an example of some of the ones that I've created, and you can get a feel for what happens with those. So we have, um, you, you, I'm not gonna get into this one too much, but you can actually use things like if you have, there's a little computer you can buy called a Raspberry Pi, you can interact with that so you can, when certain things happen, your Raspberry Pi can flip a switch for you and do all kinds of neat stuff. All right, let's actually take a look at these here because they actually will work with your Amazon Echo. Now, the only problem is, is that you have to say this word trigger but you can get it to do something when you talk to your Amazon Echo. So you actually can create your own little apps for Amazon Echo. So let's actually do one of those now. Let's, I know exactly what I wanna do here. Let's come back. Let's first turn off the app that I use to create the Bluetooth because I wanna turn my phone back on and that may fire off accidentally. So to get rid of an app, we have a choice. We can either turn it off, which is what I'm gonna do right now, or we could go and delete it. So I'm gonna actually just turn that off for right now. And we're gonna create one that when we say a certain phrase, it's gonna go ahead and ring my phone. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click on new app and it says what has to have happen. So I'm gonna click on this has to happen. And now it's gonna add, it's gonna show us all of the different ones that are available to us. I'm gonna say L-E-X, A-L-E-X for Alexa. And it says something gets added to your list, deleted from your list, so this happens, that happens, so an alarm goes off, a timer, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna use the one that says, say a specific phrase. And our specific phrase is gonna say, show them what you can do. So I'll have to say trigger, show them what you can do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. So we've got that. And now it says, what do we want it to do? So at that point, we're gonna click on the that, which are the actions. I'm gonna say phone call. And I'm gonna say, call my phone. And I want it to say, um, I can do just about anything okay so we'll leave it at that we'll make sure the phone is on we'll make sure it's not in do not disturb which i think it is so let me pull my phone over here 
and take it out of Do Not Disturb and make sure that all of the ringers and such, I have a very unusual ringer, but that's okay. And we'll put my phone right by me and we will click on Create. And it's all set and I will click down on Finish. And it's now ready to go. So when we say Trigger, show them what you can do it will go ahead and call me so let's go ahead and try that alexa trigger show them what you can do okay so it sends it to if and then about an incoming call via your secure line from mi5 okay and now i just You're open that up I can do just about anything. Message brought to you by it. And that's it. It was that simple. It was that simple to create it. So hopefully you're starting to say in your mind, say, oh, okay, I can. So when the dishwasher is done, I can have it call me and tell me that the dishwasher is done. So let's take a look at a couple other ones that I have here. I have a bunch of uh, um, Amazon Echo. I have to be careful not to say her name. I have a bunch of Amazon Echo ones that I can run. I have one for, I have Comcast or Xfinity, and Xfinity allows you to send a message that prints right on the screen. So I can do things like say, if the such and such gets jammed, put a message on the TV screen showing me that it's jammed. Okay, let's take a look at a couple ones here. I used a lot, I used a lot of those. I use a lot of the Amazon Echo ones. So if I tell it to do X, Y, Z, all right, here's one that actually just went off, unfortunately. If I receive a text message saying that the schools are closed because of snow, then display a message on the TV so I see it as soon as possible, because usually it happens uh, in the nighttime. So I wanted to make sure that I wanted to make sure that I knew that. And that's exactly what happened. I was sitting downstairs. I was watching TV. We just got a text message. It popped up and said, there will be no school tomorrow or Friday. So, yay. My son will be very happy to hear that. So, here's a couple other ones. Add your Facebook status to your Google Calendar. So, every time I change my Facebook page, my status, it puts it on my Google Calendar. And what's kind of cool about that is that I can actually go back and look at my Google Calendar last year and see, you know, what was, what was I doing or what was I thinking because I can, I can see all my status changes. I have Todoist, which I'm gonna be doing a special program, a special video just on that. That's a to-do list program, which is really, really fantastic. And what it does is, in this one, when I miss a phone call on my phone, it automatically adds to my to-do list that I need to call this person back. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to remember, oh, I gotta call Jim back. It will just go ahead and do that. I have another one here that if I get a message from my wife to go ahead and put a message up on the Comcast screen so I know what's going on. Same thing with Ring. I'm using a Ring doorbell. So if somebody pushes my doorbell because I actually have uh, different rooms with different TVs and I can't always hear the bell, but in any event, you get the idea. So if somebody rings the front doorbell, a message pops up on the screen saying, hey, somebody just rang the front doorbell. When I, I have a Fitbit scale, so every time I step on the scale, it logs my weight, sends it to me as an email, but then it also logs it on my Google Calendar so I can see what I can look at that afterwards. I have another one here that just says when um, when I go someplace in Foursquare and I happen to just say, OK, or, or actually Foursquare or Swarm, uh, depending upon which which program you use, but either one is fine. And when I use that, it's going to actually go through and put it on my Google Calendar reminding me, okay, I was at Sunny's Ice Cream Shop at three o'clock in the afternoon. And that actually comes in quite handy because I bill based upon clients. I actually have automated Foursquare. So when I go to a place and I'm there for more than 10 minutes, Foursquare logs me in. And then I can go back to and say, oh, that's right. I forgot I was at Sunny's Ice Cream Shop on Thursday. If I take pictures, which I do a lot with Foursquare, it'll take those pictures and save them. I can take any picture that I put on Instagram, it's automatically putting it on Twitter for me. I don't have to do anything. When this one here, actually, it's kind of a cheat. Anytime I have a friend's birthday on Facebook, it will go ahead and put it on my Google Calendar, but I can also get it to do a post saying happy birthday so I do not have to forget. This is actually using the Hughes light bulbs. 
So when snow, it's going to snow the next day I'm in Massachusetts. So it's kind of important that I know when it's going to snow because it depends upon when my son goes to school or not. But again, when it's going to snow, it changes the lights a certain color. So if I'm sitting there and the lights go from white to purple, I know, okay, they must have just called off school or there's snow coming or what have you. So very, very simple, very, very easy. Let's just take a look at another one just to, again, just so you can see what's going on. And when you have points on Best Buy or you have an alarm that goes off from Arlo, you want to get a text message to the, the Defense Department if they put out, you know, a travel advisory. Don't go to XYZ. It will send you a piece. When a certain day and time happen, uh, a certain date and time happen, location, that's another big one. So when you go to a certain place, you can have it actually do something. It's going to read the location off of your phone. So you can say, when I enter an area, do this. When I leave an area. So you could say things like, when I leave my house, turn on the washing machine. So congratulations. You're now a program. You can now create some really fantastic apps using IFTTT. If you have any questions, please send email to questions at thehightechnomad.com. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe. You know I'm always begging you to do that. Again, it means so much to me, so I know that you guys really appreciate that. And it raises it up in the ratings, and I really appreciate that as well. So until the next time, this is The High Tech Nomad, signing out.